Hey everybody, welcome to another episode. Today we're gonna to talk about six bad habits that can cause you to fail your Step 2 CS exam. Before we dive in, if you guys haven't yet downloaded my brand new Step 2 CS book titled The USMLE Step 2 CS Survival Guide for Med Students, go ahead and download it in the link in the description below. It's 100% free for you. Now let's dive in and let's talk about the six bad habits that can cause you to fail the Step 2 CS exam. Go ahead with number one. Number one, lacking genuine interest. Guys, remember, it's a board examination. You have 12 live patients. You have to be interested. And I understand you say, well, I am interested, but there's 12 cases. So case number six, number eight, maybe your last case, you might be tired, exhausted. You might show that you're tired and exhausted. It's not a mannequin in the room. It's a human being that's gonna react to how you are reacting. If you look down, if you look upset, if you look like I'm not really in, into this, feel like they're acting, they're gonna know exactly how you're feeling. So you have to show genuine interest. Are you concerned? Show an empathy, sympathy. Talk to them, interact with them. Yeah. They have your grade in their hands. Yeah, ask some questions. If, you, if they just traveled to Mexico, ask them if they had fun. If they are an accountant and you say, oh, that sounds interesting, yeah. get a little bit more information from the patient on a more personal level. Another way you can, um, show interest is by building rapport, which means just finding that underlying connection between you and the patient and then building a stronger bridge. Exactly. Very simple. Exactly. Number two is insufficient eye contact. We've probably said this in every video we've ever shot. Eye contact is super important. Not only does it help connect you with the SP, but it builds trust and it makes you more credible. If you're not making eye contact with someone, they're not going to trust you. Are you going to trust me as your physician to nope. take care of your health? If I'm never looking at you? Will they trust us if we just keep talking back and forth like this the whole time? Probably I'm not. not either. No, so it's important to make eye contact. Number three. Number three, sanitizing hands. Whether you're washing your hands in the sink, whether you're using gloves, whether you get hand sanitizer with the, the Purell, whatever they have in the room, you have to make sure your hands are clean. Now, tons of students are saying when and how and what. At least wash your hands or sanitize your hands once before the physical exam. You want to wash when you walk in? Fine. You touch their feet, you want to sanitize your hands again? Sure. But if you do, take advantage of that time. If you're going to walk away from the patient and walk to that sanitizer, maybe five, ten seconds worth, communicate, right? Spark a conversation. Yeah. Mr. Jones, so you told me you're married. Great. How many years are you married? I don't care how long, how, how many years they're married, but I'm building rapport while I'm walking to wash my hands. Yeah. Hey, Mr. Jones, you have a question perhaps to, uh, you want me to ask while I sanitize my hands? Never just beeline to the, to the soap and just turn your back and do nothing. That's not a good idea. Yeah, you use every second that you have in the encounter of course. To, to, to progress yourself through the encounter to that passing mark. Ask questions, build rapport, every sing and, and you should always also have this planned out before your encounter. Don't just go on a whim, wash your hands. Um, this case I'm gonna wash <clears> in the beginning, next case I might not. Make sure you're gonna do the same thing every single time and have a plan of how you're gonna use those precious 15 to 20 seconds. Have some questions pre-planned so you can ask it, build rapport every single case. So you hear us over and over again talking about sequencing and, and having a plan. Whether you are a medicine, you're an attorney, you're a successful entrepreneur, it's all about consistency. It's a routine, right? So if I have a routine where I'm washing my hands before every physical, if I have a routine where I'm walking in the room, shaking hands, and I'm shaking hands when I leave, you could wake me up at three o'clock in the morning and ask me the routine. I'll tell you the specifically the routine because I've done it in and out. Yeah, and because it's such a stressful exam and the day is so stressful, you need to have that muscle memory just of course built in even be a week or two before, not just primed on exam date, but you need to be so, so good a couple weeks out that it's it's just like like you said, wake me up in the middle of the night and I'll be able to tell you exactly what to do. It's well, got to get to that level. Well, yeah, I'll give you an example. Let's say you have a surgeon, right, going in for a specific surgery. Mm. They're stressed. They have someone's life in their hands and they've done this surgery a thousand times, you know, whatever the case might be. They're able to address the situation. There's an emergency, God forbid, no problem. They know how to address it. You see a basketball player, they're playing basketball, they have all the people in the crowds booing him. He looks at them, no problem. Shit, and goes ahead and scores his points because he's done it to a point of autopilot muscle memory. Great metaphor. Perfect. The next one is repeating questions. So this is a really bad behavior. Simple solution is make sure you know the mnemonics, make sure you use yeah. the mnemonics. 
if you're repeating questions, it's because you're just not using mnemonics properly. Uh, there's no repetition within the mnemonics. As long as you know them and you practice asking those questions, you should not be repeating anything. And honestly, I see over and over again in the students that we train, what happens is they want to go off script. They say, you know what, I know the mnemonics, but I'm going to ask, let's say, weight, appetite earlier in the case, which is perfectly fine. But you understand, now you made your life more difficult. Why do you want to make your life more difficult on the CS exam? Because what's going to happen is you ask a question out of sequence, which is understandable and respectful. Then later, when you get to weight, you're going to ask it again accidentally. And that's when the patient's going to fall to you. Because I say, why are you doubling up? They're going to think, are you not understanding or did you not hear what I asked you, what mm -hmm. you said? So don't double up. Know your sequence. Don't go out of script. You'll be fine. Awesome. The next one is poor draping skills. And draping skills means when you're maneuvering the gown down during the heart-lung exam, when you're maneuvering it back up when you're done, when you're maneuvering it to expose the abdomen. Sure. Those are the basic, those are the two main times you're going to have to yeah. do it. So. There's a couple things that you need to make sure you do. Number one, don't make the patient feel uncomfortable. Number two, always untie and untie the gown. They can't do that for them. My suggestion, I know you suggest the same thing, is once you've untied the gown, ask the patient to lower it to the, a level that makes them comfortable. And then when the you're done, sense. ask them to raise it up again and then you tie it. That way you don't accidentally um, graze, let's say, part of the anatomy that will make the patient uncomfortable. You don't fumble with the um, with the draping with the gown. It's just it's it's something. There's such a simple fix for it. When you're doing the abdomen and you lay the patient down, pick up the um, towel that's on their lap or the um, the blanket that's on their yeah. lap and have them raise the gown to a level that's comfortable, exposing their abdomen. And then when you're done, have them lower it. There's no reason why you absolutely should be touching the gown whatsoever, in my mind. And what I realized, and if you have assessments that we had recently, is students come in to do a live assessment, live online assessment, whichever one works for you, for your schedule. So they come in, and next thing you know, they're also tating my chest over the gown. Right away, mm -hmm. I stop them and say, what's going on, what are you doing? That tells me they're practicing at home, and they don't have a gown. So if you have to practice at home, buy a gown online, but realistically, when you come train live with one of us, you have to make sure when you go in on game day, you're washing your hands, you're gowning accordingly, using the proper drape, because that one wrong move, you'll fail the case. Exactly. The last bad behavior that can cause CS failure is not shaking hands. Shaking hands nice and firm. A nice firm handshake builds a connection, it builds trust, it, it, it just is a great way to begin a meeting with someone. If you were to just meet someone and just say, hey, how you doing? Um, it doesn't have the same effect as a good strong handshake because you know when you touch someone you build that bond and because you don't have a lot of time on the CS t t to build rapport build the connection build trust and likability you should do it right away yeah that's why when you walk in you smile you make eye contact and you shake three behaviors that are shown to increase trust and likability you absolutely positively must do it when you walk in and then at the end when you're walking out shake their hand again well, think about it. You're the patient. I come in. I don't shake your hand when I walk in, and I just get up and say thank you for your time and walk away without shaking your hand. You're more likely than not not going to feel that great. Like Dr. Sowers is so busy going to play golf or something that I can't shake your hand. Think of it that way. The SP is very sensitive. They have a grading system, and they have to grade you from A to Z and back. Shake hands walking in, shake hands walking out. Yeah, if you don't do it, you're going to exacerbate this disconnect between you and the SP. And you're just putting your, your, your score in jeopardy. And so uh, it doesn't matter if you, you, you have a problem with shaking hands or not. We're absolutely saying it's not an option. Do it or you will lose points because you're not putting forth the best possible uh, behavior to increase your, your likelihood of success at the and end of the day. I actually had one student a couple weeks ago. Um, her and her husband came in and her husband goes, you know, I'm sorry, but my wife can't shake hands due to our culture, our, our beliefs. I said, well, that might be an issue because then when she's touching the patient, it would be myself, a male patient, what would happen? So you mentioned, you know, for, for medical reasons, she can, you know, palpate the patient. And I explained to the guy, I said, well, you know, I understand, but in this country with this exam, shaking hands, walking in one out is part of a medical treatment. It's part of connecting with the patient. So I said what I had to say, and, you know, they understood that that shaking hand is a life and death situation on the CS exam. It could definitely make you or break you. Yeah. Exactly. Um, that's just how it is. And you have to play the game to maximize your points. So that was six bad behaviors that can cause step two CS failure. If you guys have any questions or want clarification or you think there's any other bad behaviors we missed, throw them down in the, the uh, comment section below. We'd be happy to get back to you. If you guys have any questions about anything else related to USMLE prep or CS prep, 
leave a comment in the comment section below and we'll get back to you. If you haven't yet subscribed, hit the subscribe button, hit that little bell so we can notify you whenever we release a new video. Thank you guys for spending 10 minutes with us today. We hope that it was a valuable 10 minutes. We'll see you on the next episode. See you guys.